Yo, what's up everyone? Hope you're having a good day. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Phil. I'm also known as Get a Job in the world of music and visual art. Today, I'm going to be going over my process that I've honed in, as well as my experiences with circuit bending, video enhancers, and mixers. Before we get into things, I want to kind of go over what got me interested in this rabbit hole that we call video bending. It all got started. My roommate came back with a CRT from his job one day. And CRTs were never anything new to me in particular, but now that I am older, I had some new ideas for them, mainly in regards to using them for live music visuals. So I started off making these little dirty video mixers. Um, I'll make a video on those a little bit later. Let me see if I have one nearby though. Ta-da! Um, so I started off making these for a little while just to start glitching out the visuals and it went really well. Um, very simple to make, very quick and easy to do, but I wanted to get a little bit deeper into it. So I started looking into video bending, which is where you take a video mixer or enhancer. I don't know if y'all can see that. I can't pick it up any higher right now. You take a video mixer or enhancer and you rewire it with potentiometers and switches and push buttons, kind of like this. Basically short circuiting yourself and you can get really cool glitches out of that. So started diving into that. Now we're here. Also disclaimer, you will be working with high power so I recommend if you're gonna start out find something battery powered some musical instrument or something I was antsy and knock on wood but nothing has gone wrong yet if you do want to start on a video mixer I would recommend something like those SEMAs that I'm about to show you or these super basic Archer enhancers Radio Shack I think that are powered off of DC 12 volt as opposed to AC 120 volt, like this lovely guy here. This big old archer. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So I got my hands on the SEMA Pro Edit 3. It was like 30, 40 bucks on eBay. Powering it, I'm using this AA battery pack. It's a 12 volt DC, pretty handy. And you don't want to use wall power. Got this TV thing. It's a, what is it? It's a DVD player. I got my potentiometer assortment, some switches. Oh, gotta walk away, grab the wire. There's the wire. Uh, I didn't end up actually using this wire, oddly enough, but let's take it apart. There were three screws in the front and three screws under the little foam feet on the back. So I took those out. Once I had everything out, I opened it up, looked at the circuit board inside and I had to take that out too because I couldn't quite see the chips. Now here you'll see me, I'm looking up all the individual chips on the circuit board, um, just double checking my safe pins, making sure that I'm marking them with a Sharpie. That way I don't touch anything unsafe. Got it all hooked up. Uh, my GoPro's going in through a little HDMI to RCA adapter. And then I have the outputs going to both the CRT and that DVD screen. The bends look a little different on both, so it's always nice to have just a second. Now I'm taking just a, a wire. I think I have it hooked up to a potentiometer, most likely a 1K pot. Just going around touching my safe pins. And everywhere that I find a good bend point, I mark it down on my sheet of paper. I don't have too many tips for finding the bend points per se, but when you do see something happen on the screen, even if it's really wild, I typically mark that down as well. Um, I'll come back around with some ceramic capacitors and retry those bend points. That'll typically tame the bends, as Pushkar would say. Decon. 
So I went around testing all my bend points and then right about here, I'm not paying close enough attention. And yep, there it goes. I have successfully fried my first video mixer. So I had two options. I could either go back on eBay, find another one of those SEMA Pro Edit 3s, which I did, but we'll talk about that another time. Or I could use one of my video enhancers that I've had laying around for months on end. The SEMAs are powered off of DC 12 volt, so I'm able to use that battery pack, whereas my Archer enhancers are powered AC 12 volt, they only go directly to the wall, so they are a bit more dangerous to work on. But I was determined to have a working piece. I went ahead and found the bend points for this enhancer off camera. I figured it would be a bit redundant after having bent that SEMA just a second ago. So here I have all my components laid out. Um, there were 14 potentiometers, six push buttons, and four switches. Um, I take that back, I guess five switches, one switch turns on one of the potentiometers. So have those all laid out as I'm gonna place them on the case. Now I'm getting to soldering my bend points, just attaching a little lead to each of the points I'm gonna bend from. I forget how many in total this piece had, but there were a lot of them. Then I installed all my components into my case. I went ahead and painted it as well, but also did that off camera. This enhancer was a bit trickier to work on than other enhancers I've circuit bent, mostly because of the way the case is built. It didn't give me a lot of room to solder inside of the case once all my components were in, but I figured it would have also been difficult to install the components once they had been soldered. This is just the way I did it and I managed to make it work. Closing the whole case up, bad, bad, bad. Learned my lesson right here. Thankfully, I didn't go ahead and close up the very back of the case. That would have made it leagues more annoying. Went to turn everything on, noticed that It was permabent. Or rather, I thought it was for a second. Thankfully, I recognized this bend, so I knew exactly where to find this bend point on my bay of switches and potentiometers. So I was able to find out I had burnt one of my switches, replaced that, resoldered everything, uh, put it back together. Thankfully, it all came together well this second time. Yeah, here's some clips showing what I managed to get out of it. These are all clips through a time base, by the way. So they are a bit more stabilized than what you would get directly out of a CRT. But I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Feel free to DM me on Instagram if you have any more questions about this stuff. Um, I'll have a video about Dirty Mixers coming out pretty soon. Um, those will certainly be a much more simple project than anything like this, but fun nonetheless. I'm excited. Catch y'all in the next one. Peace.